What is your never again brand, store, restaurant, or company? I run the front desk at a hotel and they are an absolute nightmare. They also straight up lie to the guests, and to the hotels constantly. Truly one of the most shady companies I've ever dealt with. They purposely try and deceive people who don't know any better into thinking that they are dealing with the hotel directly. They create ads in such a way that when people google the hotel's phone number, a number to Expedia comes up. And if the customer asks if they are speaking directly with the hotel front desk they will say yes. There have been countless times where guests have called to cancel their reservation that was booked through Expedia. I inform them that they will have to contact Expedia directly since they prepaid through them. But that it will be no issue because the hotel does not charge a penalty fee for cancellation. An Expedia representative will call the hotel with the guest on hold and ask about getting it cancelled. I tell them it's no problem. They ask if we will be charging a penalty fee. And I tell them no. All is right and good. Right. Nope. I then get a call back from the guest who is upset. Saying that the Expedia representative told them they could not be refunded. Because of the fee charged by the hotel's cancellation policy. Taking the guest's money. And blaming it on the hotel and keeping all of the profit. This has happened countless times. I once had a guest, while at the front desk call about cancelling 3 days out of a multiple day reservation, as she had to leave earlier than expected. They pulled the same bullsh with her, not knowing that she was at the front desk. After me telling the representative that the cancellation is fine, and we will not be charging any penalties, they get back on the phone with her, and blatantly lie. I asked her to hand her phone to me, and that was quite a surprise for the representative, who said that there must have been a misunderstanding. Used to be a health inspector, in my first year a lot of my old favorite restaurants were ruined for me, but none so bad as the discount sushi place my college bestie, and I used to frequent, they had roaches bad. In my time at the health department I never saw them worse than in that kitchen. We got calls about the roaches at least twice a month. And every time we went they were back with a vengeance. They were closed for them multiple times. But just never kept up with the pest control. And cleaning necessary to get rid of them. They were also dying till apia red. And selling it as red snapper on their menu. This is pretty common around here. But it's super illegal. Because it's literal false advertising. Fun fact, some people are allergic to tilapia. Not sure I want to be around when that restaurant owner finds that out. They had hundreds of cardboard boxes stacked outside their back door, plus a bunch of old equipment they weren't using. This added to the roach problem, and any day it could turn into a rodent problem. One time I drive by, and they had animal cages back there, too. I don't wanna know that story. Add to that, I'm pretty sure the employees are all indentured servants or victims of human trafficking. They all show up in the same beat up white van every day and work a 12 plus hour shift. The owner is unkind to them, and they don't respect him. He says he can trust them to do their jobs, but was sketchy when we said to fire them and hire employees who will. We never had proof, but it was always upsetting and struck me as off. He tried to bribe me and my coworkers multiple times. 2. I'm not a health inspector anymore, but he still tries to give me free food or money. When he sees me, he opened a new restaurant and I didn't know it was his. So an friend and I went to go check it out. I was told that appetizers were free for me only. Then I saw him in the back. We had to leave. Never again. It's too sketchy and too likely to get me sick. We bought a flea medicine from Hearts to use on our cat and she became lethargic and didn't eat anything. We took her to the vet and they told us that they have been trying to get that medicine off the shelves because of how it affects animals. I was in a theater watching Despicable Me when my cat finally passed away. It sucked knowing that my cat is dead because of some money hungry brand who doesn't care about the safety of the animals it gives its products to. Comcast, a door-to-door -door salesman straight up lead to my dad, saying they had a Ford EBR setup that would cost less than what we were paying AT&T. When the installation guy got there, he said that no, they didn't have a Ford EBR setup. He was told to give us the standard 2 DVR setup, which was absolutely not something that would work in a house with 6 people with wildly different tastes in TV shows. So my dad tells him never mind, we are sticking with AT&T then. But because the Comcast guy had already installed a new cable box, he couldn't take it back with him. So we had to mail it back to Comcast ourselves. 
the kicker is, 5 years later Comcast tried to bill my parents for the cable box, saying we never sent it back. My parents insisted they did, and Comcast wanted the UPS receipt, which obviously we no longer had, because it was 5 years ago, and we hadn't heard anything from them before this. So my parents refused to pay, Comcast sent a collections company after us, and when my parents explained the situation to the collection company, they were like those f's, we'll take care of this. That was, thankfully, the end of it. Probably the nicest collections agency you'll ever see. That happens so rarely where they will do anything but hound you for payment. Comcast is so known for billing for the boxes, even after they have been returned. I had mortgage underwriters just ignore Comcast collection accounts. Underwriters never just ignore collection accounts. If I see something is being shipped by on track, I'll cancel. The three times they were the delivery company from Amazon. They lost one package completely, and tried to say it wasn't their fault. The second package was also deemed lost, but then showed up on my doorstep something like 6 weeks later. The third time it sat on shipping label created for a week and I just contacted Amazon, and cancelled the package. You don't find a lot of positive reviews out there, and any positive ones you do find seem, like they were written by the company via a fake account. Every package I've ever had stolen, was shipped via on track. They claimed it was delivered, and I never find it. One time I looked with minutes of its supposed delivery, yeah. Sure maybe the residents of my apartment complex are shady but ups. FedEx and USPS never seem to have this issue. OnTrack regularly marks my packages as delivered without coming anywhere near my house. I always have to call and complain, and they have to come back the next day. I've had them pretend to find the package in my front yard after I watch them leave a car with it. Lift. They recently charged me a damage fee for damages I could not have plausibly caused. I sent statements explaining how it couldn't have been me. They sent back a standardized statement and didn't give me any additional information. There is no phone line to talk to a representative. I sent them multiple follow-up emails, which they never responded to. Now I have to write a statement for my credit card company to dispute the charge. Warning. Disgusting story ahead. I went to Dickie's barbecue pit. Their food isn't amazing. But I was craving southern food in my suburban town in California. Doesn't have many options. So me and my girlfriend buy some sandwiches and have them for dinner. They are cold and taste like salty sweat. The next day I have uncontrollably shitting liquid sh and vomiting multiple times an hour. If I was alone I would have gone to the emergency room. But my dad's a nurse, and was there. I vomited something like 20 times in the whole day, and kept dry heaving afterwards. The diarrhea came so fast, and uncontrolled that it ruined multiple pairs of underwear and a rug. That was by the toilet. Why my dad has rugs in the bathroom I don't know, but I shone it when bent over the toilet. It took only a day for me to feel better, and I was already eating heavy foods again. But lo and behold guess who comes over to see me well again and chess herself in my bathroom, my girlfriend, the only other person who ate her dickies, so I spent the rest of the day, after having just sh and vomited myself to death, helping my girlfriend, when she was shitting and vomiting, I think we are closer to each other after that experience, tl, doctor, ate a dickies barbecue pit, shted and vomited ruining clothes and a rug, gf came over, and shin vomited too, wayfair, Purchased a $1,000 sectional couch that was delivered with damaged upholstery. They refused to let me return it, and instead offered me 10% off my next purchase. Yeah. Never using that discount code. Refused to let you return it. F that dispute the charge. Not enough people know that you can dispute charges through your bank. I bought an engine from AutoZone for a vehicle I owned. They had a vendor build the engine and it was supposed to ship to my house. I waited 3 weeks for it to arrive, but it never did. I contacted their store, was told that it hadn't shipped, yet and was coming via FedEx freight. I kept up with the tracking, but couldn't get anywhere with it. I kept calling back every couple of days, to see what was going on, and no one could figure it out. I finally managed to find out, that it had shipped via another company, RL Freight and had been delivered to somewhere else. It was like pulling teeth to get a refund on an engine I never received. It took another two weeks to get the refund. I won't buy a soda from AutoZone now. Yeah, I got three. Yes, three bad starters in a row from them. I thought I was losing my effing mind. 
Fourth came from a dealership and it's still in the truck four years later. Whenever buying a part from AutoZone or Advance, get it tested before leaving if possible. Mine got a whole batch of bad alternators once. Had to test 30 before they found a good one. Racing Motors gave me a damaged motor and claimed a compression test was the only way to test the engine and said it passed, barely held on in one cylinder. To make matters worse, if you put coolant in where it ought to go, it would come out of the oil pan, made a few calls, and had ML exchanges with their mechanics, and was informed coolant and oil touch regularly, and that is how it cools the oil. Wrong on so many levels, never got my money back either, so I ended up using the good parts from the exterior, to rebuild my old engine. They legit told you the coolant is to cool the oil. Mayo was informed coolant and oil touch regularly, and that is how it cools the oil. JFC mechanics buy stickers at 5 horsepower technical college. 1800 flowers, F them. They waited several days after I placed an order for Mother's Day to tell me that they wouldn't be able to fulfill the order. They waited until the day before, putting me in a bad position. Now I google my mom's sip at flowers and have a few choices. I call the local shops directly and one. 1800 flowers is cut out of the process. Same. Local florists are the only way to go. Also 1800 flowers never run subscribes you from their cavalcade of marketing sh florist here. 100% do not use places like 1800 flowers or pro flowers, you will never get what you ordered, and they destroy a local floral business, by cheating them on money and business. Basically what happens, is they advertise and take orders for flower arrangements, and then send those orders to local florists through Teleflora or FTD, while keeping a majority of the price, for example. They will charge you $50 for a floral arrangement, and will show a picture of an arrangement that in reality, costs about $70. Then they send it to a local florist, and give the florist about $29.99, to make that exact same arrangement, and tell them to just substitute as necessary. So the florist has two options, either make the arrangement as pictured, and take a $20 $40 loss, or make the arrangement for the value given to them by the site and risk an upset customer. Either way, us local florists lose and look bad. Now florists can reject the orders, which is probably what happened to your order, because they weren't giving the florists enough, and they didn't want to take the hit on Mother's Day. But if they reject it, they lose money and business which isn't always feasible for small floral shops that need the money. The cherry on top, is that if something is wrong we have to make it, right and give them what they want, and hope 1800 flowers pays us back for it. It's incredibly shy for customers and florists alike, and should be illegal. My sister sent my mother some flowers for her birthday and luckily my mom sent us a picture of the bouquet thanks so much for the flowers, they look nice, but it was not what was advertised, there were supposed to be some gerbera daisies, and it was bullsh carnations, my sister knows her flowers, so she knows the difference, I get some things are hard to come by during certain seasons, but to just swap them in and not say anything is wrong. Frontier Internet, they are one of the shittiest ISPs I've ever had. I will never go back, no matter how cheap it is, I have Frontier, I stopped paying them like 3 years ago, and they continue to give me service, they are so disorganized, that they have no idea, I almost switched from Comcast to Frontier for just cable only, my install day came, and I was given a 4 hour window, and no one showed up, I waited around for 2 hours after the window, and then finally called, they said, oh the installer got busy, and we need to reschedule, we can do it two weeks from now. I told them to cancel my installation, because it didn't really seem like they wanted my business. A company's got to a special kind of effing incompetent to make Comcast the preferable option. Okay, so we have your internet hooked up. Wait, I only get 1 megabits per second for $60 a month. Up to, the speeds are up to 30 megabits per second. So I had 4 no-show installations, and took off 5 days of work for 1 megabits per second internet. Yeah, I guess so. This is a true story, that happened in a small midwest town approximately 3 years ago. It's ludicrous that internet providers are allowed to refer to their internet speeds like this. I'm definitely fortunate to have Google Fiber in my area. It's incredible. God I wish Google Fiber was able to really get off the ground. Masses. Got a credit card through them to buy a suit. My parents offered to pay the card off as a birthday present. 
Q months of them calling me 5 plus times a day, asking where the payment that had already been made was, harassing me to make more and larger payments. When it was finally paid off, they then tacked on a completed payment fee and never sent a bill. So the whole damn thing started all over. I was genuinely about to file a lawsuit over harassment or something. It was unbelievable. Because I would tell one person the payment was made. And then get 4 more calls the same day asking the same thing. Then rinse and repeat tomorrow. I worked masses for about a year. They charge their credit card holders like $1.75 a month. If they don't use their card, they take it away. If you actually charge something on the card, I asked the manager to explain it to me. And she was just like oh yeah, they'll remove the charge if you call in and ask them to. So it's no big deal. Like WTF, it's no big deal until that $1.75 gets charged a $30 late fee because you didn't know you had to pay anything. It still pisses me off when I think about it. Spirit Airlines. Never again. F them. Flight from Vegas got cancelled. They don't even bother trying to put you on another flight. Not only that you have to pay extra for the next flight available. I told them they can go F themselves. And I want a refund. The customer service person told me he can refund me spirit credit. That's when I lost it. After enough BI. He gave me my money back to my credit card. And I bought a flight on Delta. I said this about another spirit complaint in this thread. All spirit airlines flights should be non-stop. And one way. I've never flown spirit. Doing so tomorrow. Because it's cheap and short notice. Because it's for a funeral. At least I'm flying non-stop. But it is a round trip ticket. LuLaRoe. I only bought stuff. To help out a friend. That was trying to make ends meet. Luckily she quit. After about a year. Bought 3 pairs of leggings over the course of the year and none of them made it the year without holes. $25 each. Never again. Also. I felt gross buying from an MLM, but like I said, just supporting a friend. My friend spent almost $20,000 to start up for Lularo. She ended up not selling very much, and they don't let you return the unused product for full price only half price. I'm glad she's not selling it anymore, because I have the same complaint about the quality of the clothes. Absolute garbage pyramid scheme, who in their right mind would spend $20,000 on that nonsense. AT&T, I was told, that cancelling my cable and internet services with them would cost me $50, to not return the modem and cable boxes, I didn't care, as I would have had to mail them in, and didn't want to mess with the hassle, so I didn't, 6 months later I find a $487 charge on my master card, and it was from AT&T, it was $150 per piece of equipment, and a $37 service charge, you know, Charging me money for their hassle of having to charge me money. I asked if I returned the equipment would they rescind the charges. They said yes. I returned the equipment and they refused to take off the charge. I confirmed with them that they received the equipment. And they said yes they did. But wouldn't rescind the charges after all. I fought it up their chain of command as much as possible and even tried to fight it through MasterCard. But they couldn't do anything about it either. TL. Dr. AT&T screwed me out of $487 and lied to me, so F them. f i at and t it's one thing after another with these a-holes, they've been taking $60 a month from my checking account for the last 7 months for a prepaid phone that I don't have they can't tell me why or take me off auto draft because I don't have a phone number to look up the phone that I don't own. Just spent almost an hour at the bank trying to dispute this sh**. It's just the most recent in a long list of FRE caused by AT&T. Those twats. I work in the electronics industry. With your brief summary, if it's safe to assume your identity has been compromised, I'd review your credit history thoroughly and lock down the bank account you referenced. If I'm right I'm sorry, but you are also fortunate that they only got a prepaid phone. Nediman Marcus. I went there to buy a Prada bag for my mother. She had a knockoff she loved, so I figured she'd appreciate the real thing. I wear t-shirts to work, but this day it was at least a fancy one. It didn't matter, the sales lady told me it's very expensive, rolled her eyes, and walked away. So, I went next door to the actual Prada store, and bought one. I don't need to be judged by an angry middle-aged woman working retail. Thank you very much. Big mistake. Big. Huge. Comcast. 
f comcast they failed to turn off my service when i changed addresses billed me for two more months sent me to collections and harassed me for three years i could sue but it's not worth the stress i'm currently stuck with comcast i pay for their 60 mbps internet package to get one 5 mbps downloads along with only being able to have one device connected at a time wayfair delivered a wooden table that had a huge split on the side and was broken where you put the leaf to extend the table got four a deliveries and ever single time it was the exact same table with the same damage eventually got a full refund but did they seriously think that would work makes zero sense to me bonus ordered a bedroom set around the same time and paid for delivery and assembly the assemblers were two-thirds through the assembly and told me they couldn't finish because they couldn't understand the instructions had them take all the stuff back and also got a refund i had some fairly expensive furniture delivered from art van before and noticed a pretty big scuff where the laminate was chipped off the side of a computer hutch this was the mid 90s lol anyway they said they'd get another from the truck which i found really implausible and sure enough they were gone for 10 minutes before coming back with the same hutch except they had colored in the chipped area with a brown marker i made some interesting phone calls after that one this really tickled me wayfair boasts low prices but really skips out on quality seems like ordered a desk that was nowhere near as nice as I expected, and the instructions weren't very clear. Wafer. Hey Needle. Overstock. Amazon and even Target are starting to all carry items from the same designers. I hop around between sites to scope customer images and reviews. To get a real feel for what I'm buying then I buy from the cheaper site, if I'm sure about my purchase, or from Target, where it's easier to make a return at a brick and mortar store. Bought my queen bed off hay needle after so much research, and waiting for price drop, but I'm really happy with the quality, given how cheap it was. TurboTax, did my return. Got a notice, that my e-file needed to be corrected, logged back in to fix it, and my return wasn't there anymore. 6 hours on the phone with 3 tiers of tech support, each one trying exactly the same thing. Finally they were just trying random sh so I tried random sh in parallel, managed to get to my return with the invoice number from paying for the service without logging in, tried to get them to understand that this was a very bad thing, that they should report to someone, and they told me they had no access to anyone technical, and no way to submit bugs, this from the company, that lobbied to make it illegal for the government, to offer tax filing service, I know you weren't asking for advice, but for anyone else with similar experiences, here is the most recent slash r slash personnel finance tax filing software mega thread. I've personally used Tax Act and Free Tax USA. I recommend both of them, although I can't comment on customer service, since I haven't required any. I loathe TurboTax and everything they stand for, so I'm always eager to let people know there are alternatives. A hospital in my area, my brother and his wife just recently had a baby there, my first nephew and their first child, he was born 2 weeks premature by scheduled c-section, but you couldn't tell, since he was more than 9 pounds, when he came out, if he went full term he could have been more than 11 pounds, anyways, he arrives and everything is going well, his blood sugar was a little low, but the doctors claimed it got better, a day later, and he begins twitching every once in a while. My sister-in-law asks the pediatrician and a nurse why, and they said that it was fine. The day after that, and the twitching increased, and he began doing it every other minute. My brother and his wife panic and ask the doctor, but the doctor checks his blood quickly and says nothing is wrong. But if they are still worried about it, they should wait to go to the pediatrician on Monday. Three days later, as soon as they leave the hospital despite the baby still twitching they turn around and ask for the doctor to please look one more time. He refuses and tells them that they can't look anymore because they are discharged from the hospital, refusing to believe that their baby was okay. My brother and his wife took him to a different hospital's emergency room. The doctor there took one look at the baby's blood and immediately prepared a bottle of formula for him. His blood sugar was 36. If you aren't familiar with blood, sugar then just know that sugar that low can be deadly. My sister-in-law's milk hasn't come in yet. She didn't know that. And the pediatrician at the first hospital only gave the baby 2 ounces of formula in 2 days. He baby was very close to going into shock. 
if they took the doctor's advice, and waited until Monday, that baby would have been dead, before reaching home. You might want to look into medical malpractice. Golden Corral. That place is a festering pile of sh. When I took my serve safe class for work, the instructor was a former health inspector. Literally all of his examples of what not to do, were from Golden Corral. Applebee's. First time I ever got food poisoning from a restaurant. You're not missing much. Chili's. I don't know how this even happens, but I was served fried chicken that was cold and literally had ice on it. Well it's not called warm as dude. Best idea ever for a restaurant. A wall of microwaves and a wall of TV dinners. Warmies. For when when life gives you the cold shoulder.